And now, here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success. I'm your host, Wes Tankersley. Today, we have a very special guest with us. But before we get to that, I just want to let you know that there are a lot of Shaping Success merchandise that you can pick up right now. We have t-shirts that have just come out. I'm actually wearing one if you're watching the shirt or the shirt, watching the show. Um, we've got those coming out. I've got some Shaping Success hats that have uh, my beautiful hair and that logo um, and a bunch of stickers. So if you're interested in those, DM me on whatever social media platform you follow and let's get you some of that stuff. That's a great way to help support the show, but it is also free to just subscribe, rate, and review. So I would really appreciate your help. Our guest today is Emilio Carbajal. I actually went to high school with Emilio and he recently was on Forged in Fire which is a show that I watched a lot, and I think it's an awesome, awesome thing. So we're going to talk about that, where he comes from. So here he is, Emilio. What's happening, man? What's up, buddy? Hey, it's good to see you, and I, and I know we, we had this. I hadn't talked to you in a very long time, and then I started seeing what you were doing, and I ended up getting in contact with you because my dad's always had this steak flipper, but he never had one as cool as the one that you made me. So... Um, and then it just kind of went from there. So we'll talk about you being on Forged and Fire, but kind of just kind of give us a little bit of background. I know you went to Ontario High School because we went to the same school. I was a little bit older than you, but um, tell everyone, you know, kind of where you grew up, who you are, and, and what got you to where got you into, like, forging. Uh, well, so I actually was homeschooled. Um, I, I went my senior year to Ontario okay. um, just so I could play soccer. But, um, I mean, I, I grew up with you and your brother and, and played baseball with your brother and stuff like that. So I spent most of my, um, well, up into high school in Ontario, uh, growing up there and then moved around a little bit, but, um, stayed, you know, in the area, but, um, yeah, um, uh, and then you ended up work so right now currently you're a corrections officer right so is that kind of where you went after high school is that what you've been doing for the last what 20 years <laughs> yeah crazy huh yeah we're old um yeah no so i did floor covering for um i did it when i was in high school i did it to get out of school um did that until i was i think 27 and then started at the prison i've been out there for 15 years so yeah, yeah it's funny because i think that my i'm not positive but i think my mom had something to do with you getting hired possibly <laughs> she did actually i was just thinking about that um i went to one of their little job fairs out there and um i mean my dad works out there and i have other family friends and stuff that work out there but she helped me fill out my application i mean i was homeschooled so that, that part was pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> so she helped me fill that out. And, and I, I honestly think like she was a huge, huge help in that. So I know she was. Yeah. So that was awesome. That was a blessing. Well, it's funny because I remember this. These are the things. And when we talk about Forged and Fire, I'm going to talk. We'll talk a little bit about watching you make that blade because I remember you. I mean, you're, you're probably you're you're a pretty little guy. <laughs> and running around, and you were speedy Gonzalez on the freaking baseball diamond. I mean, if someone was going to be stealing, it was going to be you. And I had my little brother, you know, he's a big old bastard, throwing heat or, <laughs> yeah, or, hitting the, or hitting the backstop. It depended on, you know, you could tell within the first five pitches how good of a pitcher he was going to be that day. Um, but yep. it, was pre it was pretty crazy. So the floor covering thing, who, did you, so your dad works at the prison, you said? with the floor covering who did you work for doing that was that for him did he have his own business and you were working with him or how did that come about no i was actually working um so me and my dad built a house in ontario um and i think i was like 13 14 years probably about 14 years old i uh, started doing that and then um an uncle through marriage helped us do the floor covering and like I said, to get out of school work, I was like, I'll help you. So I started working with him on the, on our house, and then it, it just progressed into me pretty much working full time with them for the most part. Um, and and then I worked for other companies as I got older. But what did what 
made you, you know, it's, it's kind of weird because I think about like the era that we come from, right? So the era that we came from was like bust ass, work really hard, get through the day. What made you kind of get in that mode? Was your dad that way? Was your mom that way? Was it instilled from you by someone in general? Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, my dad, uh, he's something else. Uh, such a hard worker. Like I, I remember just watching him work through no matter what, just to provide for our family. And I mean, at the time it wasn't something that you like really see. Uh, I mean, I'd help him with jobs and stuff like that. I remember one job, uh, it was like in the middle of winter ish. Um, there was snow everywhere. Anyway, we were working. It was super, super cold. Uh, some family had problems with their water here. So dad went out there um, and one, I went out there with them and, and we worked on this water here and rewiring it and stuff like that. And I remember just freezing and, and dad, dad likes to do, um, cause he's an electrician. He likes to run wire and he wants it like nice and clean. So like the wire comes out of the box and goes straight up and then straight across. Um, and I remember telling him, you know, we ran the wire and stuff and, and I'm like, well, that's good enough. And he's like, he kind of jumped my ass about it, but, um, but it stuck, you know, um, he said good enough's not good enough, you know? Right. So that's always been, uh, well, I'm just watching him work. I mean, yeah. He instilled that into me and I put it into what I do now. And you do a lot of stuff. I mean, forging is just one thing that you've took up. It kind of started out as a hobby, right? I mean, every time I see a video of you, you're working on a truck, you're building shelves, you're building your shop, you're, you're doing something. And I know when I first started talking to you about it, there was a lot of things that you were talking to me about because someday I want to kind of do the same thing because I think it's super cool. And after I started talking to you about it a little bit, I found Forge and Fire and I'm like, shit, this is cool. And this is what you're doing. Um, where did yeah. you learn all the stuff that you learned? Did you just do it on your own? Was it something that your dad or, you know, you just kind of hung out with people who were tinkering all the time and stuff like that? Was it something you always wanted to do? Um, so uh, again, I mean, dad was just a huge influence. He, he started out, um, after they had me, he started out, uh, Ernie's electric. I don't know if you remember them from Ontario as a electric pump company. Yeah. Um, I mean, and it was just, you know, it was electric motors basically is what he was doing. So he was always tinkering with stuff and I always loved it and kind of picked that up. And then, you know, building the house, learned a lot from that and, and just always progressed and always just loved learning that right. part of stuff. You know, the, the, uh, hands on, I, I was never a book guy ever, <laughs> but, yeah, well um, and that's the interesting thing. Like, I think that that that's kind of the, I got I th I'm pretty sure your dad and my dad are pretty much the same age, but they're like the jack of all trades. Like they could do anything. They could frame a house. They could wire a house. They could plumb a house. They could go out and change a motor. Like I've changed motors with my dad before or changed a motor with my dad before, but he's probably done it a hundred times and they just don't, you know, uh -huh. they don't put that emphasis on it anymore. So it's just kind of crazy. You know, and so, yeah, I mean, I learned all of it from my dad and it was what I've learned from him. The biggest thing was the only restriction is you like your mind. That's the only thing that stops you. I mean, obviously you don't know everything and, and to go and pull a motor or whatever. I mean, you got to learn and do it, but the only thing stopping it is you. Um, and for dad, it was more out of necessity. We didn't have money. Um, so like learning mechanics was just, we couldn't afford to pay anybody to do it. So dad, and we didn't have YouTube or none of that yeah. stuff. So dad just did trial and error. So, and I think that that's like I mean, one that's, of the things that we don't ever really see. Like I, I came to this, uh -huh. like I was always like a perfectionist, but I never knew how to do it. So like I would watch my dad do something and I'd be like, man, this is, you did this. It looks great, but you could have done this. And he's like, yeah, he goes, well, every piece of wood isn't square or every, you know, bar that you put up there is not, but you have to do everything you possibly can. And I think we look at that stuff as like, we're surgeons, but it doesn't really have to be, 
you know, like a surgical repair. Um, yeah. I know that's kind of like dumbing it down a little bit, but like you just, you don't get, you don't get scared by it. The only way to learn it is to do it. That's yes. It. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can't, I mean, I, I, I've had a couple of interviews and stuff like that. And people, they've asked me like, Hey, what's, what's your main advice? And, and to me, it's just, um, get out there and do it. Don't, don't say I want to, or I don't have, you know, I've always wanted to just go and do it. I mean, I know there's some limitations to some of it, but, um, the biggest part is just doing it. Well, and I think, I think one of the things that happens, like, I mean, you, I, I think, I think you know this, but like I was a teacher. So I, I started out working at Les Schwab. I did that for 11 years and I went back to college. I failed out of college the first time because I just was not a good student as well. And it was like, I didn't want to be there. And then I went back and I got really yeah. good grades, but all the things that I learned sitting behind a desk in books, I could have learned in the classroom. And that's what pisses me off is that we have to pay so much money to go to school to do something that can be learned for a piece of paper that says you can do it. And then even when you have that piece yeah. of paper, you can't do it or you may not be able yep. to do it. So, um, yeah, no, it, that, so a lot of like a lot of what I've learned, a lot of what I've done has been, it started out, I was bored at work. I mean, it's a super monotonous job. Um, and you know, like I said, I've always liked the creative side of all of it, you know, just the learning part. Mm -hmm. Um, but watching guys on YouTube, YouTube was a huge inspiration to me. Um, and there's a couple main guys that I watched a lot, but, um, at a point it got to where I was like, well, why can't I do that? They're doing it. And they're the ones learning too, as I mean, they're showing me right. them learning. So why can't I do that? And that's what really you, what kind of put me. What kind of sparked you into, into forgery though? Like, I mean, uh, it's not, is that a good way? Blacksmithing or whatever you want to call it, whatever, because you're not a forger. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> if I could forge the money, I'd, yeah. I'd be a way better off. What, <laughs> sorry, what got you into that? What kind of, did you see someone making a knife or something? Did you just, you just picked up blacksmith? You just wanted, you saw some metal and you wanted to pound some metal out or what, what happened? How'd you get into that? No, so it was, um, I start, I mean, I knew wood, I, I've done wood, I've built houses, I've, you know, done flooring. Um, so it's something I was familiar with. Uh, a friend of mine gave me a tool, a, a wood lathe, um, which is crazy because it sat out in the weather for uncovered for like five years. And um, I like to duck hunt and I, we were talking one day and I was like, I want to make a duck call. And he's like, well, I got a wood lathe. I'm like, well, that's what I need. He said, come get it. It's been sitting out there. So anyway, I started doing that. And um, what really led into the metal work was um, the tools for the lathe is basically a chisel. They call them a gouge. Um, excuse me. Um, for a set, like a cheap, cheap set is like 80 bucks. Uh -huh. Um so I was like, well, maybe I can make one. Started looking it up and, um, well, and, and actually the, the other huge part of getting into blacksmithing, the house we lived in um, was like a hundred, well, I think it's like close to 120 years old now, but um, it ran off a coal forge or a forge, a uh, furnace. Right. Um, so there was like a truckload of coal down in the basement. Uh -huh. So I'm watching these guys do this stuff and, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. I got a bunch of that down in the basement. So I rig some stuff up and, and forged my first uh, gouge for the, um, for the lathe. And, and then I didn't really go crazy with the wood or the metal. Uh, I, you know, I was excited about the duck calls and did that for a little bit. And then, you know, I was like, well, I made a tool so i can make other tools and it just kind of progressed into knives and and knives is kind of where i've been steady with yeah and that's i i noticed like when i i got the railroad spike meat hook from you and i and I, and that was something that you were making but i noticed when i started following you on instagram and started looking at those videos and things like you were 
really into the knives, but you were making the other stuff kind of out of necessity because you could sell that stuff and not everyone's going to buy a knife. Um, and it's interesting that you started with coal because coal is one of the hardest ones to, to forge with, right? Because you can get, you have yeah. a regular forge too now, right? You used to just do it all coal forge, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, that's all. I mean, that's, I was actually, uh, blessed a lot of my tools, I would say 90 plus percent of my tools were either given to me or sold to me really cheap. Uh, and I've been super blessed, uh, with all that. I mean, um, I couldn't do what I, I mean, I, I look back at the stuff I made before and I'm like, Holy cow, that's terrible. <laughs> uh, but back then I had an angle grinder. That's all I started with. That was my first tool. And I did that for uh, probably about a year. Um, but it was, uh, I was blessed and got, uh, somebody gave me a, a propane forge and, and worked into that. And actually it was, it was more than just the blessing of getting that. Um, I ran out of coal and Couldn't around here, anymore? it's kind of hard to get to. <laughs> Yeah. And around here, it's kind of hard to get. And when you find it, it's expensive. So it was a blessing in, in that too. Yeah. So how long have you been using, how long have, how long into what you've been doing did you switch over to the propane one? Um, I'd say about two years ago. It's uh -huh. when I started out into, into the propane. And at first I, w I really didn't like it. Um, but then I realized I can control the heat a lot better. Yeah. Which if you have seen, which you've seen the show, I'm, I'm yeah, pretty we'll, sure. We'll talk, um, about, we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> okay. I, okay. I, think that, I think that there was more issues than just not being able to, you yeah. Those bastards made you take off your sunglasses. I think that's the problem. You're not, you can't see the heat because you're used to seeing it in a different yep. tint and they took it away from you. <laughs> yeah. I was blinded. Well, tell us about Forged and Fire because I, I, I know that I talked to you about. It. I was like, dude, you should go on the show. And the next thing I know, you're sending me a text and you're telling me, hey, I'm I'm going on it. And I was like, what the? This is badass. I was so proud to hear that. It was super cool. How did? What was the process? How'd you get on there? Uh, so, well, you sent me the link. <laughs> oh, did I send uh, you the link too? <laughs> yep. Yep. Um. I had looked it up because, I mean, everybody that learned that I did blacksmithing, they're like, oh, have you seen that show Forge and Fire? I'm like, it got to the point where I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm tired of hearing that. But, um, <laughs> and, you know, everybody's like, oh, you should try it out. You should try it out. And I, at one time I tried to find the link to get, you know, apply for it and I couldn't find it. And, and actually, I think it was almost like a year later, you sent me a link and it was kind of random too. And, I actually just sat on it for a while and um and then one day i was like you know what i mean it's basically like everything else i've been talking about you know the only thing holding me back is me um right. so do it and and if they say no i mean they say no it's not a big deal um filled out the application sent it in and within a week they were contacting me i did like five interviews and um then i didn't hear from them for like three months four months i can't remember uh -huh. Um, and then all of a sudden they started contacting me again. I was like, well, maybe I have a chance at this. And they showed so, up at your house. You, you were telling me like they yeah. come film. What was, was that like a impromptu, like a uh, interview or something to cr see if, see what you could do or what you were doing with what you were doing? Um, you know, what's funny is they were not transparent about anything. Um, uh, they said, don't talk about how we do stuff and um, don't talk to the judges. <laughs> but um, so I don't know how much I can really say, but um, they did come here. So they changed up their format of filming. Um, I think because of COVID and time, I talked to one guy and he said it took them a little over a year to produce his episode and it took five months to produce the one I was on. So I think time was really a thing. They, they really pushed it. Um, 
So was it kind of like they were planning <laughs> on doing it at your place, but then ended up doing it at a different place, basically? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, they showed up. I filmed or I forged a, a knife. Um, I didn't. It was never episode or put on the air, but um, yeah, I, I forged. We forged here for four days, I think, and then uh, I think f- four days later, I flew to Connecticut. I did. So it's interesting, and I'm going to tell you this because there's one thing that I didn't. There's a couple things we'll talk about when you were on Forge and Fire because it was super cool. I mean, you told me you're doing it. I was trying for a week to figure out how the hell I was going to watch the damn thing because I couldn't watch it live because I don't have regular tv you know it's all streaming or whatever and i was like me neither i finally was like <laughs> screw it i just purchased the season on amazon i was like i'm just gonna do this because i want to see this when it comes out so the night it's supposed to show up and get on there i go and click on it it's like you can't watch this for 24 hours i was like you son of a bitch i want to watch it now <laughs> so that's when i text you i'm like don't tell me i want to i want to figure it out on my own <laughs> yeah but when you walked out those other two people, how do I say this without being a dick? Those other two people said they were blacksmiths or whatever the <laughs> hell they said they were, and you said, I'm a correctionals officer. I want you to know something. You need to own that you are whatever that title is. What do you call it? Are you a blacksmith? Um, what do they call it? You're a blacksmith. You're a bladesmith. You're, you are that. Bladesmith, blacksmith, yeah. Yep. You need to own that and whatever I mean, your I, titles I, are, wherever you need to change that because you are. Well, and I have a hard time with that because, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, well, I guess you're saying like a piece of paper, does it make you that? But, um, yeah, I, it's weird for me to say that because I, I don't I don't know what I'm doing. I just do it. You know, yeah, I, I, I learn from the Internet and and go out and do it and so it's it's one of those like can i really put a label on myself as far as that but that's that's the stuff i do that's i do bladesmithing and blacksmithing so and i think the big thing this is it's funny to see how it's not funny it's it's cool to see how far you've come because the conversation i had with you year and a year and a half ago you were like yeah you know i was talking to you about doing some stuff on video and doing this and doing that and then i started noticing like all of a sudden you're popping up more videos so you got a little more courage and you started posting some of the stuff you're doing that pizza cutter i've been yep. watching you post that thing that's pretty damn dope um it's it's a pretty cool little tool oh there it is and look how damn shiny that is before that it's freaking oh my gosh mirrored finished <laughs> oh man that's cool though that's something that you and you've built a couple things for me. I got a shovel downstairs. I've got the for my coals, and then, and then you also made some brands for us that we used to brand shit. It's it's just it's really cool. I want to get into it someday, but I gotta get a shop first, and I don't have one in this stupid rental. <laughs> Use your barbecue. Use my. I could. Yeah. The what? The yeah. You're right. I probably could, huh? So. You rolled in there and you pulled out and you said that. So again, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to label you label label yourself correctly because you are. There was three people on that panel, and only one of them produced a knife. That is my that is my true perception of this whole situation. And unfortunately, yours broke, but it was the only one that looked like a damn knife. That was a knife, in my opinion. <laughs> yep. Um. So you came out and it was funny because you had your sunglasses off and every time I ever see you, you got sunglasses on. So I know that wearing sunglasses throughout the day or like if you're wearing those all the time, it's something that your eyes adjust to. They learn how to work that way. You're out okay. in the middle of the sun. You got those sunglasses off. And I, I want to say that that was probably part of the reason why the first one got too hot. Um. Well, it, so you can take a, a piece of steel out of the forge, let it cool down to where it looks black, right? Mm-hmm. And it, even in this kind of light, um, in the sunlight, it's even worse. Um, you take it in into a, a dark area, and it'll be like a, like a dark red. Still glowing. There's still heat in it. Yeah. So forging outside like we did, which 
Um, I mean, that's what I did for the longest time. So it was, wasn't something like super crazy and something, not something I was worried about, but, um, it did affect it. It was, it was definitely, um, it did affect how, how things ended up. I'm not asking you to make excuses because I know that you don't make them. I know that like it just, the blade failed, right? That's all there is to it. And it just like, I, you know, I'm sitting here cheering for you. And then, then it breaks. And the reaction that you had when it broke, I was just like, what? You're like, ha, look at that. I'm like, what the? So cool about it. And you're like, I'm going to see if I can make this work. And then you tried and tried. And then you went back over there and you pounded out a better knife than those other two people. You made two knives. Your knife was definitely better than the other two. Like the one, my daughter watches Forge and Fire with me and she loves the fact that a girl won but she doesn't, I don't think she understands that like that was, that wasn't a knife. <laughs> well, and you know, is that whole thing right there was, um, pretty cool in itself. And so the way we filmed, because we were out in the, I think I don't know if you can hear me, Emilio, but you lost connection. Maybe you might have to. I'm gonna. You might have to log in, and log back out. Okay, we lost a little connection, so you'll have to – hopefully he calls back in here real quick. Yep. Okay, we're going. Okay, so you were talking about – let's talk about – we had a little a little snafu here, and we'll get to kind of edit it out of there. But we were talking about how you – your knife was the only one that really looked like a knife, and the other people's did not. Talk about the process of, like, making those things. Because one thing we didn't – that I wanted to say was – you roll out and there's coal forges and you were excited because that's something that you know how to do. And I think the other two people were like, I don't do this very often. Yeah. I, you know, I, the whole thing, I, I, I never really got like super nervous about the forging part of it. Um, and then seeing the coal forge was just another, and, and being outside. I mean, I've, that's, that's how I started. I did it outside. Um, it was, nothing new to me so i was like yeah that, i mean that's a plus for me so watching that like what i see and what happened might be two different things but one of the things that i thought when i saw was like the coal forge you saw it you went right to work and they kind of they kind of showed a lot more of you at that point because i feel like you probably got in there and got that thing going like that and I, did it take your the other two people a little bit longer to get it going uh, you know, actually it, it's funny. I think it took me longer cause they brought that up in the interview. It took me longer to start my forge, but I actually got my flame going quicker than they did. Okay. Um, they, they gave us like this huge ball of newspaper and they just shoved that in the coal forge and lit it and try to get their stuff going. And <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and they, like they fought it and fought it. it. It took me a little bit, but I mean, I tore my stuff down and I, I mean, I've done it. I've done it over and over and over again yeah. for years. Uh, and it's not one of those, um, the bigger ball of papers, you know, start faster. You know, it's just, 
I, you know, I'd sort it down and took my time and got it going and just kind of slowly it. fed it. And that, yeah. And, that, and that's how, that's how cold forge has started. It, you baby it until it gets going and then you slowly feed it. Um, and they were just dumping coal on it. I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. I, I could kind of see that. And I don't know enough to know, but I know like every time I'm watching that show, because I've watched like, I don't know how many episodes are, I've watched them all. Um, I don't remember them all, but I've watched them all. But you watch them like every time there's a coal forge, everyone's just like, oh, sh we don't get to use the propane one because it's so much easier to control heat like you were saying, and you had to figure that out. And that's kind of what you ran into. Like you were talking about how metal looks different in different lights and things like that, and you could take it in a dark room and it could still be hot, but you didn't notice that because what you're standing in the sun beating at you with no sunglasses. Um, that's, that probably wasn't a problem, but I'm still pissed about that because I was sitting there thinking, like, they're taking away the one thing he uses all the time. <laughs> I know, I know. They're like, empty your pockets, you can't wear sunglasses, you can't wear a hat, you can't wear, um, you can't have anything in your pockets. On, and it was funny because we were um, still COVID, so they were made us wear a mask everywhere up until they're like, action. And then it was like, take your mask yeah. off. And, and get to work and i'm like uh i have to straighten this out because the, the mask is just messing it up right so like well um uh, we'll have to ask talk to whoever and I'm like i i'm not it's like is that your thing i'm like yeah i comb my beard out or my goatee yeah. uh all the time you know straight straight and get it's got to be straight right so <laughs> I mean, you took everything else yeah. They wouldn't let me wear a black shirt. They wouldn't let me wear a hat. They wouldn't, I mean, it was, yeah. I'm like, you took everything from me. <laughs> it's, not the, it's not the, norm, it's not the normal forging clothes I'm used to seeing you on, on Instagram. Or you no. Uh -uh. So that, that was one of the, one of the big things. Everybody's like, look, you're wearing color. I'm like, yeah, I was forced to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. So one of the things that was really cool that I saw too was the handle. Like, you know, they, they show this knife. I'm looking at this knife and I'm thinking this thing is crazy. Like your handle was not exactly like, what was, what was the knife called again? It's a Navy knife or what do they call it? It's a blacksmith's knife. Blacksmith's knife. Okay. So it's basically yep. like the very basic knife with a, with a metal handle ha handle, which, yep. and their handle was really cool. But the other people, you made you made a handle and when you whipped that thing out around that horn and you started moving that thing around i was just like he's gonna make a real handle out of this and then the other two people mm -hmm. were like we're gonna put a little hole in it kind of open it up it was like i just oh, i was so mad and then to 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 bring up man I, this i could be mad about it you can't okay so i'm gonna be mad about it <laughs> but you can't like call that one a knife that one was not a knife and like no wonder it didn't break it never even got <laughs> it never even got flat <laughs> Okay, I'll stop with that because I know you don't want to talk uh, bad about people. You know, it's, it's funny um, t bringing that up because so the way they film things, I mean, we're outside, so we're limited to light, right? So they wanted to make it look like a five-hour shoot, but you can't do that filming. I mean, it took them um, – I think we were there at 6 in the morning, and we didn't start filming until like 1. Um getting it all prepped and everything yeah getting cameras set up and all that stuff um so we were fighting light um so they split up the the days or the the time and uh, so the first day we got done and i i had my knife done already um I don't know if I want to. Uh, so, yeah, sorry. Felicia, don't, don't say anything you can't say. <laughs> I, no, I know. I, I don't. I don't know if she'll see this, but anyway, <laughs> nothing bad about her. But um, she had a meltdown at at the hotel, um, just because of where she was at with her blade, and I mean, she's she worked hard to get to where she got yeah and I, I told her i was like hey don't give up it's not done yet you know you you have tomorrow and and you still have time so don't give up and um i don't know if that 
really yeah. helped her at all. The, the thing that's cool about that, though, is that that shows kind of like, I don't know. I know that we only see moments of what went on. You know, like you're talking about, you were hanging out at the hotel with these people. So you're hanging out with them. You're spending, you know, having a few drinks with them or whatever you're doing. You're interacting mm-hmm. with those people more than just what it's showing on the show. And like when you went to go get the metal out of the, out of the cage, it was like a team thing. I, I remember watching you because I knew, I know you and I, you're the first one over there as fast as you can to get that thing out of there. And then you start, you start pounding out the metal and like those guys are like, Emilio's a beast. And I was like, yeah. Cause you got to see, like, I've, I've somewhat seen like the videos of the things that you've been doing and where you've been doing it. And you have to be, because you don't have all those tools that everyone else has. I was really excited because I thought you were going to get to go in and use, you know, the hammer and <laughs> the big blue. I know you didn't get a chance because it would have been, it would have been like, Oh, this is so nice. This is easy. And then you would have won your $10,000 and went and bought your own. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think about that. Well, and, <laughs> I mean, it was just exciting to be there. It was, I didn't know what to expect getting there. Um, I thought we were going to have something, but like I said, it's, it's stuff I've done for years, right. not years, but, um, I mean, like, so it was nothing new to like me. We were really. talking about this to, to polish your blade, to sharpen your blade, to get it to where mm-hmm. it looked like a knife. I mean, that was something that you knew how to do. And that was, that's why I was kind of excited to see that. Cause I knew that you were going to be fine other than yeah. the damn thing. cracking. <laughs> yeah. So to touch on that, I mean, you don't see it in the video uh, or the show, but um, I see how I can put this really quickly. So I still had 30 minutes the first day of filming, right? I was standing there watching them work. I had 30 minutes left. And, I mean, my blade is what you've seen. It was done. Yeah, it was done. Um, other than the quench and grinding in the bevel. Um, so I was sitting there, and I'm like, I'm good. I'm just leave it like this. Um, I was cramping up, which I'm actually surprised they didn't put any of that. I cramped up bad right at the end. Like I couldn't even move my arm. Um, but I sitting there, I'm like, am I going to regret? This is funny. <laughs> am I going to regret not taking these last 30 minutes and using them to get ahead, you know, or whatever. Um, and I was, I was thinking to myself, you know what? I'd rather use them and then, later which i do <laughs> regret um so my cold forge was already out it was cold uh, it didn't take me long to get it started back up but i started it back up and heated my blade up and threw it in the quench which is the hardening process right. um in those 30 minutes i think i had like two minutes left after i quenched it um and that was my downfall you, so you didn't have it quenched before and you went back and quenched it or you did a second quench? No, it was, so I was done forging it 30 minutes to our time limit. Um, then I went and heated it back up and quenched it. The first quench or the only quench. Um, you didn't have time. You thought you didn't have time to do the quench. So you originally decided you were going to do it. Then you went back and did it. Yeah. So, um, my thinking was I'll quench it and then the next day or, you know, yeah, what well, was the next day, but in the show, it doesn't show that, but, um, then I can just focus on profile sharpening and, and, and that's it. Right. Right. Um, well, I missed a very, very $10,000 worth, uh, uh, uh part. <laughs> yeah. After, after you uh, forge anything out, there's a lot of stress in the metal. And there's uh, what they call, um, well, either a thermal cycle or normalizing, which basically you bring it up to a critical temperature, which is non-magnetic. Um, and then you let it cool down on its own. Um, and you can actually see in the video or the, the episode, my grain structure is huge. It looked like salt grains 
Mm-hmm. Um, and they should look like like flour. Like yeah, super fine. Super, super tiny. Yeah. Um, so me trying to rush or take advantage of the 30 minutes got me distracted from what I should have been doing, yeah. which is normalize or thermal cycle the, the blade. And that's that's where the cracks came from is there was so much stress in the blade. Um, which I'm kind of surprised it didn't warp or crack. I didn't see the crack. The cracks happened after the temper, but that just shows that there was that much time stress in it. But well, I'm going to tell you. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it doesn't matter. Like I, I was, I was bummed that you didn't get to move on, but I was also so proud. I mean, and I, I'm no one, but I was proud to see you. It's cool to know that you got on there. It's cool that you went and did it because I know that you, I know that sometimes you're your worst critic. I mean, you're like, ah, why, why would I do that? You know, it's not going to make any sense, but you took the chance and you did it. And I know, I know in my heart that you're going to be back on there. I, I have this feeling you're going to be getting that call. Hey, we need to come back. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to try again because you didn't get a fair shot the first time. Like, you know, the ones that they have where they call three back and they're like, all right, here's your chance to prove yourself. You'll be there because I, I just watched, like I was watching you forge. It's just crazy. Like you've done it for so long gotten so good at it and those the other people just it doesn't always work out the way you want it to but there's a reason for it i know there is and no so- and there absolutely is there's like i don't know and and like i don't stress over it. i don't i don't fret over it i mean what happened happened for a reason and i mean it was just it was a cool opportunity and and there, there was no reason to be upset with what happened. I mean, I did, I did a lot in the time I had, and I honestly, I didn't, didn't think I could ever do that. Um, I've never put myself in that position to, um, you know, force myself to see if I could smash out two blades in three hours, three and a half hours. How long did it um, take you to make the second one? I think an hour, an hour. And the first, so the first one was two hours and then the second one was an hour with a handle. Like your first one, you never even got to putting a handle on it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, you, um, were in, you were in not panic mode, but you were like in uh, super speed mode or whatever, man. It was awesome. Yeah, it was, there was, I'm actually surprised. I never really, really panicked. I tried to do the one thing I did. Um, with forge welding the handle on and i knew yeah. the judges would love that and i knew it'd be good tv um but also knew i couldn't get it done <laughs> I was gonna ask, okay so i was gonna ask you about that too because like it seemed like i felt like you did it like you tried to do it but i felt like you kind of gave up on it early like did you just think it wasn't gonna work and you're just like screw this i'm gonna move on i knew it wasn't gonna work i mean it it could have worked it should have worked um, with the cold forge, you can get it hot enough to do a forge weld. Um, the problems with what I was dealing with is such a thin piece of metal. It's super, super easy to burn that up really quick. Mm-hmm. But the major issue I was fighting was the two pieces, how long they were on the anvil, and then having them bolt in the forge, which the forge that we had was a farrier forge. It's designed for... Um, Horseshoes. Horseshoes, yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, I was actually finding it when I was trying to quench my blade. It, uh, My blade was too long for the, the forge. But anyway, um, I, I really... I When I went into that part of it, I was thinking, well, if it works, it works. But I've had very few successful forge welds. Um, but I knew I going into the whole thing, I was like, I have to, if I don't win, I have to be entertaining. Right. Um, if I want to get back on, you know, so, um, I didn't think I could get it done. I was hoping I could, and I didn't really spend a whole lot of time on it, but, um, going into the second blade, I never really, really thought about time. I was just like, let's just get to work. Put your head down. Let's do it. Yeah. 
Well, so the the question I have now, you know, is kind of like, where is this going? How has it been going since you, you know, obviously you've been on there. I mean, it's not, I know how things go. Like people look at like my podcast and they think that the, there's all these downloads and all this stuff like that going on. But are people reaching out to you now? Are you getting more forging stuff? Are you getting some, are you getting some more business? That's, that's funny. Um, one, I didn't go into this to get more business. Um, it was more an experience. It was actually more, uh, to leave my kids something, you know, it was, I don't want to say a legacy, but, uh, just for my kids, you know, um, I mean, an experience for myself, you know, obviously, but, um, I've actually, as far as social media and, and orders and stuff like that, um, my Facebook blew up for like three days, uh, which is funny because my Facebook has always been terrible. Yeah. Um, my Instagram, I think I got like 20 new followers. Um, as far as orders really hasn't changed. Uh, I think it's funny. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's in people's heads. Maybe they just don't know, but I've had probably three different people ask for something made. And one guy wanted a sword and, I was like, before we go any further, um, what's your price range? He's like, well, fifty to seventy-five dollars. <laughs> Let me go get the leaf spray. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. So and that's I mean, it's not nothing new at all. It's it's right. it's always been there. I mean, it just a couple of extra guys just popped up and you know. So it's but it's it's to me, it's whatever. I it's a hobby. At one point, uh, like a year ago, it was it was a business, and um, I couldn't leave the shop. I couldn't do anything. I had to push out knives, um, and it slowed down a lot, which is um, turned it back into a hobby, which I love. I can make what I want to make in the time frame I want to make it. Um, so it's been a blessing. I mean. Yeah, I'd like to make some money out of it. Um, now I'm, now I'm back to putting money into it myself rather than the business putting money back into it. But yeah, well, I mean, I've never asked you about how much a knife costs because I know they're not they're, they're not cheap. But you do make some cool stuff, and I and I'm happy to, for the things that I have. And it's funny because that gal, you know, she's like, oh, I saw it. like I posted. I always post a video with that freaking thing because I love it. It's it's perfect. Like my dad's got one that's. It's a little piece of wire with a piece of wood on the end of it. And I got the one with the Punisher school made on it, made out of a, a railroad spike. And I still remember you cussing me out because you forgot how hard it was or how fun it was to pound one of those out. <laughs> but it, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, too bad you didn't know somebody that can make another one. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I think Father's Day is coming up. Yeah. I should have, yeah, I should have you make me one. He's got, I, so those brands <laughs> that I picked up from you, I don't know. It's been two years, maybe two years ago for Christmas. He, yeah. uh, that's one of those was for him and the other was for me. So it's, it's cool to, you know, have that and it's sitting downstairs on the, on the mantle. And, um, that's awesome. It's some cool stuff. It's, it's cool to see what you're doing. So I'm excited. I know that you're trying to turn it back into kind of like a hobby, but I think that, I think that you're going to end up, you gotta, I, I th you gotta do what you love. Right. And I think that you're probably going to end up doing it at some point for, for a job, I think. Yeah, um, I mean, that's pretty much the goal, I think, but I'm really not forcing it. And I don't know if that's holding me back, um, but I, I still have another 10 plus years out there at the prison. Yeah. Um, but to me, it's more of a retirement plan. And um, But my my until actually forging fire um, and watching some other guys um, I would like to make I don't know it sounds crazy but I would like to make a $10,000 knife yeah like not 
you know, and it's not even the money, it's the skill that I want the you know any knife i go into and just have that that skill that's so refined that it's worth ten thousand yeah. so I, I see it that's, happening, man i see it happening you can do it we know you can you know you can you know it's just gonna take that it's just like you said it's that t- determination and just doing the work mm-hmm. yeah well in, in that like the pizza cutter um i think everything i've done on that thing I've done four times, seriously. So it's, but you know, like the last time I polished it, I was okay with it, but I was just okay with it and got to looking at it. I'm like, no, that's not $10,000. So let's redo it. Yep. Well, man, it's been awesome having you here. I I really enjoy, I'm glad that we got to do this. We've been talking about this for a while. So it was in, yeah. I was going to do it before the forge and fire thing, but that just made it so much cooler. So, um, super excited, man. So where can people follow you? Are, are you wanting to sell knives and things like that? Do you want to follow you on Instagram? Where's the best place to find you? Um, Instagram and Facebook. I just got a TikTok. Um, I, I, I was actually just watching your video this morning about, uh-huh. um, TikTok. So I, I think <laughs> I'm going to push that a little bit more. But um, I like Instagram, um, but I link all of it. It's all linked. Well, I don't know how to link it to TikTok, but um, as far as order, yeah, Carbs Customs. um, It's got the skull with the mohawk and the goatee, or I think it's mustache, but um, Carbs Customs at Instagram, Facebook, um, TikTok. But as far as orders, as long as you're willing to pay. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the biggest thing that people don't understand is things cost money. And and you got to understand yeah. that when you're building something like that, the time it takes to do it. Like I understand yeah. like it's, it doesn't take as much time to make the things that I have gotten, but I know like if you had to make a knife for me, that it would be, you know, you spend a lot of time on it. That pizza cutter, I, you've showed videos of it for about a week now. Right. But I think you've been working on it longer than that. And yeah, that thing's yeah, I've, re- I've really, um, Spent probably, I think, uh, the last two, well, and it's mostly weekends, but um, last two weeks on it. Um, but it started earlier and I gave up on it because it was hard to do. <laughs> it was new, but um, I'm I'm so stoked at where it's at. I'm so proud of it. But that's just that. Um, willing to push it the extra mile. Well, it's a great thing. I'm super excited to see where you go and uh, definitely got to do this again, man. But thank you very much for, for uh, hopping on, man. No, thank you for having me over. That's awesome. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, that is the end of the show. Until next time, I challenge you to find the shape of your success. Awesome, man. It, uh, <laughs> the, the, that was the little, sick. The little snafu, you know, whatever. We'll figure that out. I, I don't do like the Good. editing on it, but I know that he can kind of edit it up for me a little bit. I'm not going to re- – I thought I'd release it on Monday, but I decided to do – I was supposed to be interviewed this morning. The guy didn't interview – he didn't show mm-hmm. up to interview me. So mm-hmm. I ended up just doing kind of a solo one to kind of talk about where's the podcast at right now. So it'll be next Monday. I'll put it out. Not, not this coming Monday, but the following Monday. And I'll make sure I tag in stuff. And hopefully, I know that's the one thing about business is like, especially with what you're doing, it's like people don't understand that it takes time. And it's not just like, like, I mean, putting those brands together is super easy because you're not doing anything except for bending. I mean, not, not doing yeah. anything, but yeah. like, that's not polishing. That's not cutting. That's not making Damascus. That's not, yeah. I mean, it's a, uh, well, even those, that uh, uh, was something I've never done. So it was, it was one of those, uh, well, it was still a learning lesson. It was, it was fun to do. <laughs> yeah. I think you knocked, you forgot about him. I think you knocked him out in like 30 minutes or something. You said 
it was. <laughs> yeah, I forget a lot of stuff. <laughs> but it's it's awesome seeing what's going on, man. So keep doing it. And I I am I know like I remember the conversation that we kind of had where you were a little you like you're like ah screw it I'm not going to do these things you know like I'm not ready to do that and I see it's sh- slowly but surely hopping on and. People want to watch that. People are you were watching people do stuff on YouTube. Now they're watching you do stuff on YouTube. So that's so crazy. I want to get my YouTube going, um, but I don't. I mean, it's all my phone. Um, but uh, hopefully soon I can get that going. I really like to. Do it. I've I've a lot of people like I've asked and nobody's ever said anything. But just randomly, people are like, "Oh, dude, I love your videos. I watch your videos all the time." So I was like. It, and it's easier for me to do, and then instead of typing out what I want to say and misspelling everything. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, but, I do, I do the same damn thing. It's like you, you can double check and double check and double check, but it never really is enough. Um, so, no, yeah. So I, yeah. I feel you. Um, oh, look at that! We're still recording. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, that's those are some good nuggets right there, though. Honestly. Um, those are good. Those are good things. But that's yeah. I think that I, I I ended it, or didn't I? Maybe I didn't. 